so good to be here with you, Patrick and San Miguel de Allende, and I'm so thrilled to be publishing your book. It's just a beautiful, beautiful novel. Tell us a little bit about how you decided to write this book. Well, I was teaching in Miami, and um, I was reading all of these stories, the, uh, you know, about teen suicide and and the bullying and the the anger and reparative therapy, and and I thought to myself that. This is, the, this is the same stuff that was happening 30 years ago when, when I was in high school. And, um, you know, there was a young man that I went to, was in class with that um, died under incredibly mysterious circumstances. Most people in my hometown think that he was murdered. And, um, you know, it was as if they didn't care. The, the community was completely apathetic towards it. Um, it was, you know, they even went so far as to say that, you know, it was the queers in town that murdered him, um, and and nothing's been done about it. It's been 30 years now, so you know something. I, it, it sparked a fire in me. Something had to be. Something had to be done. Something had to be said, and I felt like I, I, I could tell that story. And you were you grew up not too far from where my dad James Jones grew up, and he wrote about a similar sort of hypocrisy and and uh, vehement anti. Uh, openness in his hometown of Robinson, Illinois in 1950, so apparently it's still going on. You were, you were growing up quite a few years later and it was not very different from when he was growing up. And that's how we actually met. I met you in Miami at, when I was doing a reading for Lies My Mother Never Told Me and you came with your mom and I was with my uncle Don Sackrider who's from Robinson, Illinois and, uh, and we met that night and you told me a little bit about where you came from and that's how we met and you were telling me at you know, that night about your family's restaurant also. Yes. And that was involved in this story in some ways for you autobiographically, though you turned it into a novel, you based some of the story on your own experience. Yeah, yes. Um, you know, I, initially I started it as a memoir, um, but yeah, I, I felt so restricted within that story and within the confines of memoir, and I really wanted to open it up. I wanted the story to be much larger, much more universal in terms of, you know, other people sort of being able to identify with, with the, the struggle, with, with the uh, struggle of, you know, trying to find their authentic life. And um, once, I, once I decided to turn it into fiction, it just blew up. It just, it just opened up the story. And I was able then to bring in other elements uh, you know, uh, contemporary elements such as reparative therapy, which in you know some circles is known as pray the gay away, um, and and really begin to explore these issues that were affecting you know teenagers, LGBT youth, as well as young adults, as as you know across the spectrum. Yeah, I had a, that moved me deeply when we talked about that. I had a student, a high school student who was sent to reparative therapy in New York and uh, he had a very religious family and he ended up killing himself a few years later and he was the best writing student I ever had as a you know, child in high school and it broke my heart. I never recovered from the loss of that, of that young man and um, it, it's hard to understand how uh, people in 2016 still have such vehement opposition to just allowing people to live their own lives and in a town like that or Robinson where my dad, you're from Indiana, but it was very similar. Uh, even back in 1950, there were many affairs going on, and many people who were doing things they weren't supposed to do, like driving the tarot to the to the houses of ill repute and gambling and so on, and a lot of drinking going on. But everybody did it underground. Nobody really talked about it. And when he wrote that book, it really scandalized the entire community. And I think maybe your book might scandalize a few people, but I think your book is extremely kind-hearted. Yeah, there are going to be people talking about me. There are going to be people talking about me and talking about the book. I mean, um, you know, the thing about it is that that it is based, it is inspired by my experience of growing up in a small, rural, agricultural community in my family's business. Um, and, you know, it's about my experience growing up in the shadows of this particular scandal that completely rocked, you know, our community. And, you know, it colored my awareness, it colored my coming out for well into my early twenties. And, you know, it instilled in me as a as a as a young teenager, a young boy, young man, 
wrestling with his sexual orientation, it instilled in me a distrust of my community. I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know what would happen to me if I tried to live an authentic life there. Because the young man was killed, possibly because he uh, showed signs of being gay, and nobody said a word. So in other words, justice doesn't exist for people who are different from the, everybody else. It didn't at that time. It yeah. didn't in the late '80s, the mid '80s, the late '80s, and it doesn't today. That's that. You know, I'm, we're still reading stories about teenagers and young people taking their lives because they're not being accepted either by their peers or by their parents or by their their house of worship. And you know, there's so much that needs to be done. There's a lot that's being done. There are a ton of resources out there in terms of you know regional and state and national. Uh, the Trevor Project, Listen, It Gets Better, the No Hate Campaign. Um, so thank goodness we have those kinds of resources that weren't available to me or anyone like me in, in the 80s. And I'm very impressed and proud that you are an activist and that you are putting some of the money that you're going to make on this book towards helping uh, LGBT youth. And I think that's a remarkable thing. And you're standing firm with lots of friends behind you, but in a very difficult situation. And I'm really proud of you that you've uh, you've done all this. It's a wonderful thing. Well, you, you know, what I'd like to do is, you know, wherever I am at any given time, if there is a local organization, I would like to work with them and, and talk with them, you know, and, and, and see what it is. I want to use my writing, in other words, as an opportunity to create a dialogue, to create a conversation, maybe to ease or assuage the fears that some people may have. And, and to see that there, there's, there's nothing to be afraid of. And also to let teens specifically know that, you know, people have gone through this and they've come out the other side and there are adults like me out there in the world, in their neighborhood, in their house of worship, in their school that are willing to help them. There is somebody out there willing to give them the hand and, and to not think that suicide is the only answer because it isn't. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to talk to you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. This is Kaylee Jones for Kaylee Jones Books. Patrick's novel, uh, Some Go Hungry, will be coming out May 5th.